Hi, I'm Vivian. I'm Jason. And this is Burger of the Week. Each week we discuss an episode of the Fox animated series, Bob's Burgers, and we create a themed burger based on the episode. This week we're talking about Season 3, Episode 15, OT, The Outside Toilet. It was written by Lizzie Molyneux and Wendy Molyneux, directed by Anthony Chun, and it aired March 3rd, 2013. The store next door this week was Earth, Wind, and Tires, which I like. I think it's cute. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The exterminator van was Adios Mice Chachos? It doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. No, it's a little tough to say. Adios Mice Chachos... Yeah. It's, yeah. No. But I mean, it's 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 cute, cute. But yeah. And we only had one burger of the day. We had the sharp cheddar dressed man, which is a play on the song "Sharp Dressed Man" by ZZ Top. Yeah, I know that song. My dad made me listen to ZZ Top back in the day. Oh yeah. Yep. Them and their crazy beards. Huge beards. <laughs> we had a couple of guest actors this week. Neil Flynn plays Max Flush. He's best known as the janitor in Scrubs. And John Hamm was the talking toilet, which he's not credited, but I found this out just online. He's not credited? No, which is so odd. Yeah. So he's best known as Don Draper in Mad Men, which is a show that we reference in the first scene of this episode. Which is great. Yeah. Oh, Don Draper's gotten fat. (laughs) Don't talk about your dad like that. Louise, come on. Yeah. You know, be sensitive. Weight is a tough thing for people. All right, Jason, do you want to start us off? Bob is contesting a parking ticket and decides to wear a nice suit to impress the judge. At school, Gene is having trouble keeping his baby alive for parenting class. Feeling depressed, he takes a detour through the woods after school and finds an extremely expensive, high-tech talking toilet. They quickly become friends. On his way home, a mysterious man asks Gene about the toilet. Okay, so this parenting project is so weird, and a lot of shows seem to do it. See, I don't find it weird, I just find the choice of baby weird. I think it's weird at the age that Gene is at right now. He's only 11 years old, why is he in a parenting class? That's that's fair. That is a little young to have that. Usually it's in high school. Yeah. Like, late in high school. Yeah, when you're... Maybe being sexually active, so then they have to make you scared of sex by telling you you're going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. So it's just something that we never did at all. Definitely not in elementary school or in high school. Did you ever take parenting class? I did. Okay. I did, but we never had a baby. Well, you know, (laughs) we never had like a baby project. They're really expensive. Well, yeah, of course they are. expensive. Like the actual babies. But flour is the worst possible baby to have because flour is always leaking out of those bags. If you go and buy flour at the grocery store, you're going to get flour like all over your hands. Just like a baby, they leak everywhere. Oh. Liquid, solid. Yeah, but you basically have to like tape up the bag completely so that it wouldn't get flour everywhere and just start to disintegrate at least your baby when it's leaking everywhere it doesn't shrink yeah don't tape up your baby and yeah don't don't tape up your baby also don't hard boil your baby like xander did in the buffy episode because they had eggs which also terrible option for a pseudo baby that's what they did in south park as well what is going on in those american schools What are you guys doing? (laughs) Babies are food products, apparently. (laughs) I guess. I do like Mr. Franz's comment, though, when he says, let's have all the fathers come up and assume responsibility for their reckless behavior. (laughs) That's a good one. Yeah. It's kind of nice, you know? Usually girls get blamed for it. So, you know, dudes are feeling our pain. (laughs) Absolutely. And I really like that Mr. Franz says he assigned life partners instead of just... Like husband and wife or... Okay. Nice. Good job, Mr. Frond. Very PC of you. Mm -hmm. PC principal would be proud. Exactly. (laughs) But PC in a good way. Not PC in the, oh, I hate that I can't be racist way. (laughs) So at the very beginning of the episode, we see 
uh, this mysterious man driving his truck and that's where the toilet falls out of. Mm -hmm. And that you just see him from his mouth and the toothpick flip that he does every single time you see him just... Oh, it's so, it's like a visceral reaction in my gut. Every time he does it, I just, it's like somebody putting their fingernails on chalkboard. It makes me cringe so much. It's like, I can't even explain how awful it makes me feel. Yeah. Listeners, this is like a very noticeable reaction too. We watched this episode together and he was just sitting there and like flinching every time and he does it like four times this episode and it's awful every time (laughs) i don't know what it is about it the animators did an amazing job i hope that they're very proud that they can animate something that gives somebody such a gut reaction (laughs) i don't think it was intended that way fine i'm just weird then Uh, no i get it i get it it's uncomfortable Just quick, I really quickly want to go back to Mr. Franz's classroom because the chalkboard, I looked it up to see what he had written and he wrote a bunch of stuff. Uh, He wrote, do, hug, love, carry, read to, rock, to sleep and care for, but do not leave baby in the rain, make into cake, wash, toss, shake, show the music videos, smoke. Sit on, prank phone calls, resell, give to a stranger, kabuki theater, and take in a hot tub. Wow. Some very particular... Yeah. I think there's a great three beat in that scene when Gene drops his first flower baby. Yeah. And then, of course, you know it's going to happen again. And then the third time it happens is even better. I love it. Just... (laughs) Oh, And Mr. Franz saying, wipe that baby off your face. Mm Mm-hmm. And his comment about, well, can people just have another child? Oh, yes, they can. So here you go. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Not that it would replace your already dead child, but, you know. I mean, if we're talking, like, literally. So. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think that's something I'd ever thought I'd hear on a TV show. Wipe that baby off your face. No, no, I don't think so. So that's a first. So that's great. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm just jumping back to the first scene here uh, about Linda talking about her own mortality. Mm. She's saying that, you know, when I die, like, you can have my socks or whatever. Yeah, it sucks. And the kid's reaction is just, there's no reaction besides, like, oh, I wanted this or... And it seems to me like they really understand that their parents are going to die. But they know that it's so far in the future that they don't really have a reaction. Not like, oh, no, I don't want you to die or anything like that. It's just, you're going to die. We know you're going to die. And Linda's talking about it so plainly. Mm. It was really interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it was a little weird. But I kind of liked it. I think even as a 27-year-old, if my parents start talking about their death, I'm like, what are you talking about? You're crazy. You're going to live forever. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still at that stage. Ah, okay. <laughs> the, uh, the utter denial. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. <laughs> so then we get to the toilet and I don't love it. I mean, it's just, it's a toilet, mm-hmm. you know? And like, I get the joke, but it just doesn't really work for me. Wait, what joke do you get? Like, I get that it's, it's you know, it's ridiculous. That's the idea, is that Gene would find this thing and he would be able to become friends with a talking toilet. Like, it's just silly. But I get that they're trying to make this comparison to E.T. and it just doesn't work for me. It's not really a comparison to E.T. But it, like... It's more It's of... a parody, right? It's a parody of E.T. Kind of, but, like, very, very, very loose. Like, super loose. I think they were just trying to show us how Gene can take care of something. Mm, The whole episode, he's... It's also inanimate, so who cares? It's got a personality. Just like this bag of flowers is inanimate. So he's proving to himself that he can. Even though he squashed his three babies, his flower babies. Yeah. He's able to look after this toilet. He's able to feed it and work his butt off to keep it alive by getting it power i guess so i don't know it just doesn't really work for me like i don't really find the toilet very funny i don't like this episode oh okay i'm not absolutely i i 
don't like it. I There's parts of it that I do like, but mm-hmm. I'm just trying to explain from my perspective what the episode is about. Okay. All right. It just feels, it feels to me like they were trying to do a parody of E.T. and it didn't pan out. Mm-hmm. So it's probably too because I'm so attached to E.T. that like anything that's trying to do a parody of it is generally going to come up to, like, a really high bar for me. Like, it's going to need to do something big. And it's just going to make you want to watch the movie anyway. Yeah, pretty much. Um, And it kind of bugs me that the idea that Max Flush can't just find the toilet on his own, it just seems very contrived. Like, this whole conflict doesn't make a lot of sense because in E.T., the scientists and the government officials, they couldn't find E.T. because he was hidden in Elliot's home. Mm -hmm. This toilet is just in the woods, which Max Flush was close by to that toilet because he found Gene. He could have just retraced Gene's steps. Exactly. He literally could have just gone there. So the whole story is kind of like hinged on this idea that Max Flush can't find the toilet, and I just don't believe that. Mm. So... Yeah. He's such an evil guy that he would rather hunt down Gene than actually do the work and try and look through the woods. He followed the only lead he could find. Yeah, but I mean, he had to go into someone's house and steal their $14,000 talking toilet. I know. It doesn't It's a bit of a stretch. Yeah, it doesn't really make any sense. I mean, the toilet is cool. It has cool features, I guess. I don't really think I'd want anything talking to me while I'm trying to poo. Well, let's talk about some of these so, features. Okay. It's got the bidet. I Don't mind if I bidu. <laughs> love that line. Absolutely love it. It is a good line. I've never used a bidet in my life. Me neither. And maybe that'll be like gross to some people, but they're just not a regular thing here. Like no one I know has a bidet. Mm-hmm. They seem a little weird to me. Just this idea of like water shooting up at your butt. Yeah. Potentially surprising. Would you try a bidet? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'd try ever- anything once, except for seafood. <laughs> okay. I mean, I've already tried it once, and that's why I don't try it again. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, good point. So when Jean asks, who's queen of the night? I had to look that up because I have no idea that that was a Whitney Houston song. Oh. So I looked it up, and I got my mind blown. My really? mind was completely blown because... Whitney Houston's Queen of the Night was from the soundtrack uh, from a movie called The Bodyguard, which was in 1992. It's the number one best-selling soundtrack of all time. Oh, my God. Still. Still? Still. It's right behind the Beatles' self-titled album. Wow. By only a million units sold. So it's, like, right there, up there in, like, the top ten. It's absolutely insane. I feel like I need to watch this movie just so I can listen to the soundtrack. I know, right? Whoa. Yeah, okay. it's so weird. Interesting. 1992 movie, best-selling soundtrack of all time. Huh. Weird. Queen of the Night. I feel like I knew that that was Whitney Houston somehow. Maybe I'm giving myself too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> and when the bidet starts doing its sample, I guess, it's spraying. It's water show. It's water show, yep. That's uh, the song that's playing is from Vivaldi's Four Seasons, mm. and that movement is called Spring. Oh, just a little FYI, everybody recognize that. I guarantee you. they might not know what it is, but no. they'll recognize it. Yeah, yeah, most likely. Gene's really good at comebacks. Yeah, like when Max Flush is interrogating him or trying to get him to tell him where the toilet is. Mm-hmm. His quick response of. You just won the lottery and, oh, I better go quit my job. Just, <laughs> I think that was really, really fast thinking on Gene's part. And it's very important. He learned his lessons from his parents, probably. Don't talk to strangers. Run mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. Don't go with them for candy or toilet Things. bribes. Po- toilet bribes. <laughs> yes. Hey, I've got a nice toilet for you back in my van. No, you do not. No, no. I just found the best toilet in the woods, sir. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's move on. People start treating Bob with more respect, and he attributes it to the suit. He decides to take Linda on a date to a fancy restaurant. Back in the woods, Jean shows Tina and Louise the powerful toilet. When it begins to run low on power, the kids run back to the restaurant to find a solution. 
only to find a new problem. The mysterious man who calls himself Max Flush is there looking for the toilet. <gasps> what a shady guy with his toothpick. That's how you know he's shady. Mm. He's got a toothpick. Yeah. No good guy on TV has a toothpick. Right. Okay. That's oh, like I don't that's know. like the G-rated version of a cigarette, right? I feel like I feel like Horatio Kane in CSI Miami would have a toothpick. Yeah, but is he a good guy? Because I mean his jokes are terrible. We're doing a show on about puns. I basically. know, but his are so bad. Okay, fine. <laughs> and also just ugh. <laughs> no, CSI Miami is the worst of the CSIs. No. The only good CSI is the original CSI when Grissom is still on it. So you didn't like New York? No. New York I liked was fun. Grissom and yeah. I liked his team and then when he left I was like, "All right, garbage show. Peace out." <laughs> Basically. Okay. So this suit on Bob. It's kind of fun to see Bob getting, you know, some attention from ladies and, I guess, judges as well. It's a little weird, though. He's letting the power go to his head. He is. He is. He's being kind of a jerk. And Linda's being kind of a jerk about it, too, when she talks to the women and says, well, we were all single once, but you don't have to be a slut about it. <laughs> Like, okay, Linda, calm down there. I have expected her to, like, sweep them over to the table. Like, get, get, (laughs) get away from my man. But then she takes, like, she takes it lying down when Bob says, well, nobody's going to be paying attention to you. Yeah. And she's like, oh, right. So, so mean. Also, Linda, you can put a necklace on. You're kind of a little bare at the top. Yeah. Just saying. I said that to Jason while we were watching and he goes, yeah, yeah. You can really use a necklace. Yeah, I just like that you were also noticing that her ensemble was missing a little something, a little zhuzh. I couldn't, zhuzh, I couldn't put know? my finger on it, but... <laughs> but yeah, Bob's being kind of a dick in this suit, and then when they're at the restaurant and they're getting all the drinks from people, and he's just like, oh, they're both for me, okay, cool, no problem. People keep buying me drinks, mm-hmm. not you drinks. Yeah, Bob... Don't. Do but not. He still loves his wife, and when he gets in the cab, he's like, no, let's just make out. Yeah. Yeah, it's still kind of cute. And we get that great moment with Jean and Max Flush when they're looking at each other through the window, and Max Flush is doing the little sign, like, I'm watching you, yeah. and Jean goes, oh, now he wants to switch eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. It's so innocent and sweet. Yeah. And yeah. when Louise says, Tina, cancel my plans. And then Tina's like, oh, that's going to take a while. Gene, hold all hold my, my calls. calls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that to me that just it, it was so honest and it wasn't like jokey between them that it's to me it was like I like to believe that the kids are all very organized in their social activities like this. Oh. And they've got like a little system back in their bedrooms that are very, very organized. OK, so like Jean's like nighttime cheese board that kind of thing. sure okay all right and of course tina would be the the secretarial type yeah and then gene would be tina's secretary because louise has a lot of plans mm-hmm. and also she's the boss all the time so now the toilet to me feels more like siri than it does like an et type of figure mm-hmm. it's not like a buddy it's literally like a phone it responds to keywords that you say right it's like it's just a simple ai yeah yeah it's not even cool like janet okay it's very primitive there's no name for the toilet no no they don't actually call Mm -hmm. the toilet anything all right so finish this off with an elaborate plan to restore power to the toilet the belcher kids and their friends run into a drunk bob and linda on the way home from their date they haul the toilet to the rest they haul the toilet to a restaurant and have a final confrontation with the police and Max Flush. The toilet gets returned to its rightful owner and Jean learns an important lesson about parenting. Oh Tina, you're so relatable. As they're planning this toilet not heist, escapade, rescue mission. Rescue mission. Okay. When they're planning the toilet rescue mission, Louise asks, "Does everyone know what they're doing?" <laughs> and Tina's response is, in general or in the plan the plan oh phew 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. can all relate to Tina in that moment. Oh, yeah. Does everyone know what they're doing? Hell no. Not a clue. Oh, my gosh. No, I have no idea. What's going on? That is literally adulthood summed yeah, up into one conversation. <laughs> so, okay. This is where it really is obviously a parody of E.T. Yes, of Because course. we get Jean wearing the red hoodie, just like Elliot, and we see the kids riding their bikes while they're being chased, and, of course, the iconic shot of the silhouettes in the moonlight. hmm So, before this part, it's not really obvious what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And then here it's like, oh, okay, I get it. You could have probably made this a little bit more cohesive, I think. Unless that wasn't their goal. Yeah, fine. I don't know. I, think, I don't know. I don't know. I think Whatever. when if Bob's is going to do a parody, they're not going to do a full episode of a parody. Mm, okay. They always just take moments and kind of weave it into their own storyline. Yeah. Okay. I guess. I do like the I do like the references though. They are cute. It's fun. It's nice to see all the kids working together and Jimmy Jr. Pester being shot down when he's like, "We just all have to believe." No, you idiot. We have to get the toilet somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that is nice. It's nice to see them working together. After the silhouette in the moonlight, when Gene is in the wagon. When they fall and they fall down the cliff Mm -hmm. and onto the road, I can really feel the weight of the toilet, like, Mm. as it's tumbling and eventually, like, collapsing onto the road. Like, every movement that it makes is just so heavy. I think it's a really good job of the animators, again, being able to convey weight with just subtle audio cues and just the way that they draw the toilet as it turns and revolves as it's rolling down the hill Mm -hmm. it was really impressive i really like that yeah it makes it convincing that gene couldn't lift it on his own he really did need the help of all of those kids yeah this is a heavy expensive piece of equipment and then linda and bob and the entire belcher family has to lift it into that coffee shop Mm -hmm. which that's a weird turn for me i don't really understand why we make it a coffee shop and not just The restaurant? The restaurant. It seems like it would achieve pretty much the same thing, except we wouldn't get Tina's funny line about customers bringing in their own restrooms. And why would the police come? Because the restaurant owner calls the police. That's true. So if they went to Bob's Burgers, then nobody would call the cops. Unless Bob did or Louise did again. She's already called the police before. That's true. I don't know. To me, it's just kind of a weird moment, like... Why would Bob and Linda decide in the cab to stop at the coffee shop and not just go all the way home? Maybe because there wasn't enough time. Yeah, uh, okay. The toilet was about to die, needed to be charged immediately. I guess so. But I, I noticed that as well, and it felt a little off. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, the show has a restaurant at its disposal. Yeah, why are you going into a coffee shop? Yeah. Um. R- before this... When Gene is trying to come up with the idea of how to get power to the toilet. Mm-hmm. And he's he's talking through the steps needed. Like, oh, we're going to have to get a really long extension cord and then we'll run it out here. And the way he's talking about it and he kind of hesitates as he's talking and you can kind of see his face fall a little bit when mm-hmm. he's, as he's talking, he kind of realizes how much work it's going to be. Mm. It was really, I think that was a really important moment because he... It's parenting, right? It's going to be a lot of work. And he's going to do it regardless. Otherwise, I think old Gene would have just been like, you know what? This is too much work. I'm just going to go get a sandwich or something. Mm-hmm. And But he really cares about this toilet for whatever reason. Yeah. It's his, it's his friend. So he's like, oh, this is going to be a lot of work. But I'm going to do it anyway. And then he gets the, the backup. He gets the support of his family, basically. His friends and family. They're like, we'll help you. Mm-hmm. It'll be okay. We got your back, just like family and parents and support system. Aw, it's nice. That's sweet. I didn't really think about it that way. I just noticed yeah. the way he was talking about it, and you can kind of hear his voice fall a little bit. Like, oh, oh my gosh, this is going to be so much effort and so much work, but it's worth it. I swear. Yeah, <laughs> and he's disappointed in himself, right? When he screws up at the beginning of the episode three times. 
He's frustrated. He wanted to have the baby, the flower baby, right? Yeah, and that's why he takes the detour, because he's he's bummed out. Yeah. He needs some alone time. So this is his chance to prove himself. He's not going to screw it up this time. Yeah. And he does a good thing. He makes sure that the thief was found and the toilet returns to its home. That's a good thing, even mm-hmm. if he can't have the toilet. Goes back to its rightful owner. On King's Head Island? On King's Head Island. Yeah. That makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah. Especially when head is a term for going to the bathroom. What? I gotta go hit the head. And then we get one of my favorite lines as the episode is finishing. Yep. <laughs> I know you really like this chuckle. line. When Louise says that Bob's birthday suit is wrinkly and Linda just says, oh, I'll press him. It's so let's, cute. Tina says, let's get dad dry cleaned. <laughs> and Linda's like, nah, I'll press him. Oh, it's adorable. It is really cute. It is so cute. It's such a fun family moment. And it's exactly what I would say. <laughs> I'm just going to hug you. It's like, I don't care. I love your wrinkly birthday suit. And then she loves him. It's all good. Yeah, exactly. And then at the very end of the episode, Gene is... In his bathroom, a little frustrated because his toilet isn't responding to him. And his dad gives him fatherly advice. Mm -hmm. Like, you try and you might fail, but you keep trying and that's what's important. Yeah. So maybe next time he gets a pseudo baby, he'll do well. And he'll actually get to keep it. Yeah. Or a real baby. Yeah. You know, when Gene grows up in that flash forward episode that we're going to get. Right, Bobs? Right? right i mean i'm okay with them not doing that nope i want to see it i want to see gene all grown up wearing a tank top or a belly shirt and he's got a baby bobs is in a vacuum and they exist within this time period and they never age they never get older that's that nope flash forward episode i want it Give it to me. We could have a dream sequence in the future. How about that? That is not canon. Oh, like that, okay. that means they don't have to go there, but it's maybe one of the characters just having a, a 10 or 15 minute hallucination. Okay, I could do that. I'd compromise. I'm glad. I'm looking forward to it. It's happening. Okay, so let's get to our burgers this week. And we've already had this conversation, but both of us had a difficult time with this one because Mm -hmm. it's about a toilet. So how can you make that appetizing burgers? So I guess let's just get into it. I had a very tough time. Yeah. So. Okay. How many do you have? I have two. I also have two. Awful. Mine are both really bad. <laughs> okay, great. Let's let's let me hear your first one. Oh, uh, do you need to? No, you could just give no. the winner to me. Oh god. Okay, no. Well, I need to say what mine are. Okay, the first one is the toot shoot burger. <laughs> the toot shoot. Oh no. <laughs> It comes with bamboo shoots. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> Your cute toot shoot burger. <laughs> it's cute? Okay, I'm glad. <laughs> oh, you're embarrassed for I've me. It's okay, I'm embarrassed. I've never heard of... What is a toot shoot? <laughs> Your butthole. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, anyway. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll give it you... took me like a long time to think of that, and I am a little ashamed. Listeners, if you just off the top of your head have a great burger, please tell us because this was hard. <laughs> okay, so my first one is potty training. What? Potty training? Yeah, but what's in it? It comes with a side of tea. <laughs> I know. Oh my god. I know. <laughs> oh my god, it comes with tea. Yes. God, are you Cynthia? Yeah. I Logan's was, mom. I think it was who Cynthia. wants chamomile tea. Yeah. It comes with a side of tea. Oh my god. Potty training. <laughs> That's really bad. I know. Okay. All right. <sighs> okay. My second one is not good either. It's OT Dijon Home. I go E.T. Fono? No. 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 
that stretch already stretched and it snapped. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty bad. But is it like snap bracelet cool? Like real good? You want to have were many? never cool. <laughs> despite me having many. Aww. Okay. <laughs> OT Dijon home? No. <laughs> no. No. Okay, it's a stretch. I, I agree. All right, what's your second burger, Mr. Comes with a side of tea? Father figure huh? burger. The father figure burger, and it comes with fig sauce. A nice fig paste. <laughs> a little fig spread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yep, it's pretty great. <laughs> Okay, uh, yep. so do we already know the winning burger? The toot shoot? Yeah, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was the only one that was like semi-okay. Yep, that's it, the end. Goodbye, oh everybody. Thanks God. for joining us. Peace. <laughs> we have a butthole burger. <laughs> this is the podcast you've chosen to listen to. I'm sorry. <laughs> How do we spell it? Just T-O-O-T-S-H-O-O-T? Yeah. Okay. Toot shoot. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's even funny written oh goodness okay well i guess that brings us to the end of burger of the week a multiverse radio production thank you so much for listening to this the best way to spread the word or to show your support is by leaving us a rating and a review on itunes or of course by sharing us on social media you can find us on twitter at multiverse radio or facebook at multiverse radio podcast and you can always send us an email from our website multiverseradio.ca we actually got an email a couple of weeks ago from lance uh, who helped us clue into the my fuzzy valentine episode because we were both of us were a little confused of why it was called my fuzzy valentine but he made a very good point and he said uh don't you think that fuzzy refers to Bob's fuzzy memory of the, his first Valentine's? Mm-hmm. And that's a very good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, actually, um, someone on Twitter, Judy at Judy Jetson, made the same comment. She said, I think fuzzy in my fuzzy Valentine has to do with Bob's memory being fuzzy. So I, we, I totally did not pick up on that, but it makes so much sense. Yeah, it seems super obvious now that I think about it. Yeah, that's the whole twist of the episode. Yeah. So, perfect. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, Lance also mentioned the Ratso Rizzo reference for the Exterminator van, which I did not get. But um, Dustin Hoffman's character in the movie Midnight Cowboy was named Ratso Rizzo. Oh, Okay. There you go. I have no idea what the Midnight Cowboy is about, but I assume that it's Dustin Hoffman in a cowboy hat and the moon is shining behind him beautifully. And then there's like the reflection on the lake. Yeah. I'm not going to. And a rattlesnake. I'm not going to ruin your dreams of what that movie's about, but go for it. Okay. That's the movie. That's the movie. That's the whole movie. He's just standing there, his hair's blowing in the breeze, and there's a rattlesnake in the background. Yep. Okay. All right. So next week, we're going to discuss Season 3, Episode 16, Topsy. And that is a great episode. Looking forward to that one. One of my favorite episodes of the whole show. Ooh, very nice. Okay. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.